G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and this is a video tutorial on animating in Adobe Flash with the Bone Tool. Now the Bone Tool is a feature that's only available in CS5 and above or perhaps CS5.5. Uh, either way, it's not a tool I recommend to be honest because uh, there are more useful and convenient and simple ways to go about animating something which have a more effective result. Either way, there are scenarios where it could make something a lot easier, for instance animating an octopus tentacle or something like that, so it's better to know the tools that are at your disposal rather than not. What we're going to be doing here is I've created two character rigs uh, and the goal is to rig them in a way that they can be struggling to put this bag in a compartment in an aeroplane. They're both going to use different methods of the bone tool animation and the first one is the most ineffective and I'm just going to show that and get it out of the way first. Here on the left if I open this clip I have three layers. On the bottom layer I have the back arm and the reason that's on a separate layer I'll show you in a moment. The next layer above is this main section of the body with the legs, the torso and the front arm and then the next layer is the head. Okay, so to begin I'm going to start rigging this body, this main layer with bones. Okay, so I want to select it and make sure all of it is selected. Then I'm going to hit the bone tool which the shortcut is M. I'm going to click and drag from the bottom foot to the knee and let go. So that's converted that whole thing into something that we can use to rig uh, with this line of bone connections. So I'm going to click and drag from that connection up to here, up to the hip, and then drag it out to the middle of where the pelvis is. Now that is going to be kind of one of our midpoints, so I'm going to drag out from there to the other hip, down to the other foot, and then from the hip I'm going to go up to the mid and then up to the upper chest. From there down through the arm to the elbow and then up to the, what would be the hand. Okay, so there we go, we have our first skeleton. Okay, now I'm going to go to the layer underneath it, I'm gonna onion skin and lock that layer, uh, and underneath it I'm going to select the bone tool, click and drag from the shoulder to the elbow and then from the elbow to the hand. Okay, so there we go, we have the second structure and I don't need to do anything with the head. So, we've got our two rigs. How does this look? If I hit V, which is my selection tool, and then just click on either of them, it, when I click on any of the shapes, brings up the skeleton. Now, the reason why this is an ineffective method, because uh, it distorts the mesh of the character. Now, there are some scenarios where this might be good, but in general, it's very difficult to predict and control. Uh, so, for example, if I move this hand here, in general it looks okay but as soon as we start going extreme see how it's uh see how it's bending things in a really weird sort of way so you do get a cool level of control but it really warps things in an unfortunate sort of way and uh, i'm not a fan of that so the leg for instance starts looking normal but as soon as we overextend or bend it it warps the mesh you can see that so i'm really personally not a fan of that method. There might be some scenarios where it's useful, uh, but I wouldn't get into it. So I'm not going to go into how to animate that um, because it's a bit of a waste of time. Instead, I'm going to teach you how to animate with a slightly more effective method. So in this clip here on the right, and now if you want to check out this file for yourself, you can download the uh, link in the description, which has the reference file. Here we have uh, all the parts as movie clips. Okay, so everything can go be entered and edited as an individual movie clip. Okay, and it's all just chucked there on the one layer. So now to rig this, one thing to keep in mind is that with uh, constructing a rig with movie clips, you're limited in the amount of uh, bone pivots you can use because you can only have one per movie clip. So I'll demonstrate, for example, how I would rig this. Okay. So uh, first I'll show you what the parts are. The torso is in two parts. I have a top and bottom part of the torso. The arms are in two parts, the legs are in two parts, and then there's the head. And just so you know, the head I've got a little animation on its own, showing a little growly face looping in there, but that's kind of irrelevant. It's just to show a bit, of more, bit more animation. So I'm gonna select all of this character, and then I'm gonna select my bone tool, and starting again with the bottom left from the foot, I'm going to click and drag up until this area where I think it connects these two movie clips. Click and drop there in the middle. Then from here I'm going to click and drop uh, up to the 
up hip and then the other leg. Okay, so that's that rig done. So you'll notice I can't click and drop down here because there's not another movie clip there to connect it to. So as long as we strategize where we put our placeholders, it's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna click and drop up here. The upper torso. Click and drop up here for the upper arm and click and drop there. And then click and drop the back arm and then click and drop, drop the back elbow. And then finally click and drop from the middle up to the head. Okay, so you'll notice that some of the layers are displaced now because it was all in the one frame. So to, to uh, fix this, I select my selection tool, right click on the arm and I can go arrange, send to back. And I can do that with the other one too, arrange, send to back. And then with the front arm, I'll go arrange, bring to front. And then again, arrange, bring to front. So now we've got our rig pretty much set up. Now how this looks when we move it around is basically if we have our uh, selection tool, which is shortcut V, you just hit V and you can basically just drag things around. Now you'll notice that some things they move, sometimes it moves out of place. That's okay, it's going to happen. You just got to kind of move things into uh, a place until you're happy with it. So we've got our rig here and now we're pretty much ready to animate. The reason I've started rigging it in the back like that is so that it can be rigged properly and now I can actually bring it forward to the front where I want to animate it. Okay. So, first of all, I'm going to pick a pose. So I'm going to start off by dragging, oops, dragging him down like this. See how it's quite difficult to control. Uh, it's like playing quop, but animating. There's really not a huge amount of control in this. I'm sure the Toon Boom one has much better control, but... Uh, I haven't yet learned Toon Boom, and when I do, I promise I'll make tutorials. Anyways, so I'm going to start off by having him hold the suitcase like this. Okay. Now there are two ways of selecting and moving part of the rig. So if I, I hit V and then select this character, I can either select this circle joint bit where it purely rotates around the previous joint, like this, so like the arm there, that sort of thing. Or I can simply click on any area of the movie clip itself and it can rotate in its own pivot. Okay, so that's one of the more useful things. There we go. So this is our opening pose. Okay, so to create the next keyframe, I simply create a new keyframe, which is F6. There we go. And I'll do that with the case as well, which is on the layer below that's not in the rig. I'm going to have him push the case up slightly and then with the V select his rig and have him oops, push up. And drag his body forward a bit. Bring it around. Push his leg down. That sort of thing. Well, let's see how that looks. I'll add a classic tween to the bag. There you go. So you can see how we've got that first bit of motion. Now, I'll admit that is fairly easy, okay? And uh, good fun to do, but it's not long-term effective because there are very limited things you can do and it becomes noticeable how limited your range of motion is. So, I, I mean, I'm spending this whole tutorial talking down the bone animation tool, which I probably shouldn't do. So now to add more of these segments of animation, what I did was I just selected out here, click and drag and hit F6 on both layers and then added a tween to the layer underneath. I'll show you again how I do that later. So I'm just going to have the arm tuck under, have the bag rotate. Now I'm going to try something. I'm going to try hitting Q, which is the manipulate the object tool. I'm going to try right click and send backwards and see what that does. Oh, okay. So what that has done is it's moved the head on the 
pivot itself. So if I hit Q, which is the manipulate tool I used, and drag it out here, and then with V it shows that when it's out here, it just pulls that strand. Okay, so that's that's what happens. It's um there are two ways of manipulating the objects. The first is with V, which keeps everything connected at the same length to that joint in the bone tool. The second way is through hitting Q or using this uh, free transform tool, that's what Q is, and you can transform it as normal. And it is still connected to the exact same pivot point, but it can stretch and warp the length of the pivot point, okay? So now I can do things like having him come forward, have the knee come up, and then I'm gonna extend it now and have him dip down a little bit. So out to frame 40, I'm gonna hit F6, and then I'm gonna right click and add a classic tween to the frame under. Hit V, and bring him forward. Tuck his arm down. So it can be quite a simple tool. The problem is the results are difficult to get exactly accurate to the way you want. And there's a uh, no simple sort of back and forth way of oops viewing things so and it can be difficult to control it can also be quite funny perhaps if you want an amusing afternoon just try animating with this tool it will be like quop so we've got a bit of motion i'm going to do extend it again f with f6 classic tween i'm going to dip him back oops And then I'm gonna have him slip back quite a bit. So hitting V, pull him back. Oops, tuck his, tuck his upper leg down so it's really bent. Pull him back like this. Have him lean back, losing his balance. Oops. <laughs> now his head is a bit too close to his head, so I'm gonna hit Q and pull it away. Then go back to the bone tool. Have the bag start to fall towards him. There we go. And make sure that we have that bag on a tween. So let's have a look at this so far. Bit of a fumbling animation. So it is a bit blocky and we will add, uh, what do you call them, we'll add easers in a moment. But as you can see, in the space of 10 minutes, I've got the basic rig and animation happening, which is kind of cool and one of the advantages of using this. So if you're not interested in massively smooth animation, you know, this is something you can do. The other thing as well is at the moment I have this all on the one rig, but uh, if I were to do this properly, I would actually have the back arm on a separate armature and have that behind the bag to get a proper sense of depth. Anyways, well, let's have him stumble back. So, up here, hit F6, add classic tween, and then I'm gonna pull his front, oops, need to make sure V is selected. Pull his front leg back, like this. Lean his torso forward, but his body's still kind of falling back a bit. Have his arm bent as he sort of cat catches the bag from falling too far. And let's see what, ah, oh, bloody timeline, stop doing that. And see what it looks like. Okay, so it needs to be a bit more, with a bit more motion. Okay, so I'm gonna add easers in a moment, because that's what's really missing in this. Okay, I'm going to have a bit of a bounce. So if I hit F6, pull out to 885, add a classic tween. So in one of the motion, uh, in one of the tutorials that was about motion in animation, we talk about um, we talk about effort and uh, release. And so this is the this is the pull in, and then we need a release once he's caught it properly. So which is just going to be a slight movement forward. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with how this is looking so far. 
So we have that bounce back. And then finally, I'm gonna have it finish off by looping and connecting up to this frame. So to do that, I'm gonna select these two frames and hit Control Alt C. And then come up to the very end, let's say 95 and hit Control Alt V. Okay, now I can make the bag appear and I'm just gonna add some easers to make it a bit less robotic. So as you can see, we've got our rig. We've set out to do this loop and it's worked. So I'm gonna bring out my properties panel. I'm gonna get rid of these. I don't, oh, I do need the tool panel. Make sure that's on the left. Flash is being really difficult. The other thing too is the workspace I have to work with is a bit smaller than usual and, uh, and I'm less accurate than I'm used to because I'm using a different tablet. I'm using uh, one of these smaller Cintiqs, which is still a great tablet, but it's difficult to adjust to because I'm used to a certain tablet. So hopefully that'll be repaired within a month. Uh, anyways, so I'm gonna start off with these two and I'm gonna have them both ease out. So I'm gonna select the top one, which is the armature, and I'm going to drag the strength of the ease to out. And then I'm gonna select the motion tween under it and ease it out. So as you can see, we've got, ah, oh, bloody hell. There we go. It eases out. I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna ease in, then ease out. Okay, so in between frames 20 to 32, I eased in, and then from 32 to 40, I eased out. I'll do the same for the bag underneath. So ease in, then ease out. And then we get this sort of much smoother motion. Moves in, moves out. Next, same sort of thing. Ease in, ease out, ease in, and ease out. This is a difficult sort of thing to get used to, using easers, I mean. Uh, and then finally, the last easers we'll do will be from 60 to 65, we'll go in, and then from 65, oh, 67 to 85 will ease out and that means when the bag's falling it's picking up speed and then with the bounce back it drops it drastically so same with the frame underneath ease in and ease out oops sorry there is one more the last one are these last two frames easing in now usually i connect them i make sure that if there's a segment before i ease it in and then i ease it out so as you can see that's the ease out from this end frame, which is the ease in, okay? So then I loop it and it's a much smoother motion and I'm actually very happy with how that turned out. So if I hit control enter and test it, you can see this test thing that I've done and it's looping and we've got exactly what we tried to make, which is this character loading his bag into the airport uh, aeroplane compartment. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, and understand bone tool animation a little more than you might have before if you haven't tried it before, if you've struggled with it. Make sure to leave any questions you have in the comments section below and I'll try to answer them if I can. Uh, and until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on Newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.